A quick note before we begin, this video details the extremely dark, painful, and ultimately glorious process through which I was able to transform myself into a completely different person. What I've discovered and the process I'm about to share with you guys will probably make you uncomfortable, possibly even upset, especially if you're someone who believes that these sort of transformations can only be achieved through positive mindset and self-love. I, I say this respectfully, but unlike the overwhelming majority of people who create content on this topic, not only have I actually achieved colossal transformations within each of my dimensions, but I've also spent years working to understand the underlying psychology and mechanisms behind those transformations to the level that I can now articulate them to you, the viewer. Regardless of who you are and what your beliefs are, if you truly wanna get the most out of this video, all I ask is that you keep an open mind. In the first part of this video, we're gonna go through the exact process, the exact steps that were critical to my transformation. And then at the end of the video, I will give you the exact formula that I used to reinvent myself from a powerless, futureless nobody into a powerful, destiny-fulfilling somebody. Let's begin. Lesson one. The self is not something to improve. It is something we must destroy. It's no secret that I absolutely detest the industry of self-improvement. The problem, ironically, starts with the name itself. The words self-improvement positively reinforce the absolutely ridiculous idea that there is even a self to be improved. Everything, and I mean every single thing that we are seemingly powerless to improve about ourselves is literally because of this idea that we have of ourselves. The self is nothing more than a construct, the end product of a lifetime of accumulated attitudes, values, and behaviors that we mistakenly come to believe are us. The idea that we carry of our self, otherwise referred to as self-image, can best be summed up with the following quote, I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. This is what's known as the looking glass theory, which posits that the self is essentially just what we think other people think we are. This is why so many of us work so hard to project a self that is happy, hardworking, disciplined, filled with purpose, even if we're not really any of those things. Because as long as we think that other people think we are those things, then we think we are those things. This is why when we try and fail to develop good habits, the real reason, more often than not, is because we are blind to the truth that we are not who we project ourselves to be. No, quite to the contrary, the overwhelming majority of us are weak, pathetic creatures who retreat to hedonistic pleasures like social media and Netflix in the face of anything that threatens the comfort that we are programmed to seek in every waking moment. It's why the overwhelming majority of people who project themselves to be improving are not they care more about the projection because to them the projection is the reality. True reality is irrelevant. Now, our self is also an accumulation of things. We are born as nothing and with nothing. And then over time, our self accumulates things, mainly material things like clothes, cars, and houses, but also beliefs, uh, how disciplined we are, how good looking we are. The more we have, the more we have to lose. The more we believe ourselves to be something, the more risk we associate with taking action. This is why most people who read self-help books take virtually no action. They're terrified of shattering the illusion of their improved self that they've spent months or even years cultivating from the comfort of their sofa. This all brings me back to my original point. If the very idea of who we are is the thing that's standing in the way of what we could become, why the fuck would we want to improve that? Why not just destroy it and, and allow something far more powerful to emerge? For me to be able to fully understand this, I had to first lose everything. Lesson two, see ourselves as we really are. The problem with seeing ourselves as we really are, and this was certainly my problem, is that we don't dislike our self enough to want to see it as anything other than that we want to see it as. The old me was an idiot. He knew nothing of the world and had no curiosity to even want to learn, perhaps because he already thought he knew everything. He spent his entire life following the path that society had laid out for him. Went to college for five years, studying a career that he absolutely hated, only to finally earn a degree that he would never use. 
Whatever good habits he did have were entirely motivated in the pursuit of material and superficial bullshit that he never once thought to question. And then finally, one day, at 26 years old, the girl of his dreams left him to go back to a previous boyfriend, a guy who was superior in ways that actually mattered. He was worldly, virtuous, spiritual, philosophical. He, he had goals and purpose. So when it finally sunk in that the girl was never coming back, I sent this superior man an email where I shared very intimate details of our relationship. This email was designed to devastate him. However, in a final earth-shattering display of superiority, he thanked me and wished me well. I spent the next few months just spiraling deeper and deeper into depression until one day the pain was so great that my entire concept of self, everything I believed myself to be and all of the things that I had accumulated, none of it mattered. By losing everything, the faulty notion of self that I had spent an entire lifetime accumulating suddenly disintegrated into nothingness and I was free. My new self was free to experience the raw energy of pain however it wanted. And so as easily as one might blink their eyes, I chose to now experience that energy as power. Lesson three, the importance of solitude. So in, in the years following my epiphany moment, I spent virtually every second of every day taking immense action to improve myself. By far the most critically important element of all of this was that I decided to completely remove myself from the world until this process had fully taken its course. No TV, no social media, no interaction with friends or family. My initial motivation for retreating into the shadows was that I, I wanted to absolutely blow away everyone with the new person that I had become when I eventually emerged. But even after a, a few days of existing like this, solitude became the most important weapon in my self-transformation arsenal. All of the external noise of my life was suddenly gone. It was just me alone in my apartment with some books, a computer, and a massive amount of work to do with nothing to distract me from doing it. I no longer had others to compare myself to. I could only compare myself to who I had been yesterday and who I could be tomorrow. And as I made rapid progress and improvements every single day within each of my four dimensions, these comparisons became the most prideful aspect of my existence. I had started training for an Ironman, and within a few weeks, I was training multiple hours every single day. Every morning began with a swim in an ice cold public pool. Every evening ended with long jogs into and out of New York City. And every weekend featured a six to eight hour bike ride through New Jersey. All of this training was performed in complete and total silence. In each individual second, I found myself making a choice between taking it easy or giving it my all. My old self and my new self engaged in an all out war, a war that raged for one year and two months until it was finally race day. By the time I had set up on the starting line, I had severe plantar fasciitis in both feet, impingement syndrome in both of my shoulders, and a torn bicep muscle that forced my arm to dangle when I jogged. But after all of this, my new self was all that remained. Oh, and uh, by the way, I did eventually re-emerge from solitude and everyone I knew was completely blown away by my transformation, but that mattered a lot less to me now. I was just getting started. I know a lot of people are going to critique these techniques and trust me when I say that the overwhelming majority of them literally have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. What I've just shared in this video are just my experiences, research, and opinions. Always do whatever you feel is right. This is The Path. Ciao, and I'll see you guys in the next video.